Walking around, you do see different stuff as uh, far as like the body marriage line. They use a lot of things that help them lift up and move things to the car. You just sit there and, you know, program something. And if it has its own set mind to go ahead and do everything. And then as humans, we just come in and take the extra step to help the technology. It's not the, the cure-all for everything. There's definitely a lot of things where people perform the operation better, but certainly for the right applications, robotics are a huge improvement for the process. The prediction of five million jobs lost by 2020 to technology is serious, but it's not the main question. Construction, manufacturing, services, public health and education, these industries will still exist. The main question is, what will be the future of work? How will we define work? How will we share the wealth? The, from the viewpoint of the, the labor or jobs, now the, uh, we really need a new education or new training. We're working with a world in motion in FIRST Robotics, trying to encourage you know, students from third grade all the way up through uh, the end of high school. We um, had students make sailboats, and then we had them race them, and so they could see how quickly they could move. And they immediately went back and started to say, oh, I saw what happened, I'm going to go change this or that. And that was third graders. I had just given a prize to a kid of 18 years old that has discovered something really very, very unique. Came up with how to get better productivity and better yields for seeds of corn. And so he basically came with the idea that if you would perforate these seeds, you would get more food. And uh, you think about it and say, but he didn't go to university. So how does he get all that knowledge? And he told me, I mean, I've been watching YouTube since the age of 12 and I'm so interested that I've seen everything about it. I've read everything about it. The world is really open uh, to learning. The thing is, uh, how do you give the incentive to your kids to do that? It's this ability of digital technology to change outcomes, to truly empower people all over the world that can create a more equitable growth, because I think the world needs that. Fourth Industrial Revolution has the potential to make inequalities visible and to make them less acceptable in the future and hopefully to gather and garner political support to take the necessary decision to reduce the gap. Humans have always been using tools, but because of the recent advances in technology, we're beginning to have machines that can augment us in all sorts of interesting ways. I was the first person in the world to be able to voluntarily move my legs while stepping in a robot by exciting the nervous system using electrical stimulators directly onto the spine. We believe that a cure will be possible if enough of the right people have the will to fast track a cure for paralysis. We take two things from the patient. Um, first, we take a three-dimensional x-ray, and we extract the three-dimensional data out of that so we can make a perfectly shaped puzzle piece. And then we also take a sample of fat tissue from the patient so that we can extract the stem cells out of those. And we use those stem cells with this three-dimensional scaffold that we fabricate, and after three weeks, we have a piece of living bone that's uh, ready for implantation. Being able to use genome editing to understand the genetic changes that lead to cancer and technologies like uh, drug delivery, getting molecules into particular types of cells. There's a lot of excitement about being able to move much more quickly on this disease. One of the things that I think is so essential to free and open societies is freedom of thought. Um, and up until now, the conversation we've been having is around freedom of speech. Once we can access people's thoughts and access people's emotions, um, we have to create a space that enables people to think freely, to think divergent thoughts, to think creative thoughts. And in a society where people fear having those thoughts, uh, the likelihood of being able to enjoy progress is significantly diminished. We need to take responsibility at every level of society, from the individual and the personal to the institutional to the global, to adapt to these technological challenges and changes which are redefining what it means to be human, what it means to work, what it means to be completely embedded in this world. People always ask me if I'm an optimist or a pessimist. The technology exists, but how do we get it and implement it 
at the scale we need at a price that people around the world can afford. Even though we have everyday problems, we have to solve, we have to find a way to lay the foundations for the innovations of tomorrow.